Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Vanderhorst and I'm a technical leader in marketing engineering for Cisco XDR. In this video, we're going to take a tour of Cisco XDR's automation feature and talk about its main components and capabilities. To get started, let's talk briefly about the types of outcomes XDR automation can deliver at a high level. First, we can automate how we investigate and hunt for incidents. By writing workflows to collect data from various sources and conduct automated investigations, we can identify issues in the environment more quickly and get the relevant information in front of an analyst as soon as possible. Second, we can use information from investigations and incidents to automate how analysts respond to threats. Workflows can take response actions at machine speed when specific criteria are met, or analysts can trigger workflows to augment how they get things done. The playbook feature of the XDR Incident Manager is actually powered by XDR Automation. Third, we can simply automate things we don't want to do. Many security operations teams have repetitive tasks they need to complete, such as auditing, data collection, reporting, and so on. Workflows can help with those tasks and simply be set to run on a schedule. And finally, automation can help us integrate systems in ways not previously possible. Not all technologies like to talk to each other, but if you put a workflow between them, you can produce some pretty cool outcomes and bring products together in new ways. Now that we have some context for why we have automation in Cisco XDR, let's take a look at it. Note that this video is an overview. For more information about anything that I cover, please refer to the product documentation by clicking the help icon at the top of any page in Cisco XDR. You can also refer to other component or feature specific videos. We'll start by looking at targets. Targets are the resources you want your workflows to be able to communicate with. For example, you may create an HTTP endpoint target for an API you want to send requests to, or an IMAP endpoint target to check a mailbox for new emails. The information you need to provide to configure a target will depend on the target's type. XDR Automation has a variety of different target types you can use depending on what types of resources your workflow wants to talk to. When you integrate some products into Cisco XDR, a target will be created in XDR Automation automatically. If we click on the Cisco Secure Endpoint target here, we can see that it is being provided by an integration configured in XDR. The nice thing about these targets is that they're created automatically and use the same credentials as the integration itself so no additional configuration is required. When building a workflow, you can use custom targets you create yourself, targets created by integrations, or a mixture of both. Account keys are next and go hand in hand with targets. Account keys are credentials used to access targets that require authentication. For example, if you create the IMAP endpoint target I mentioned earlier to check a mailbox for new emails, you may create an email credentials account key with the username and password for that mailbox. As with targets, these account keys come in various types depending on the type of target you intend to use them with. Note that you will not see the credentials used by integration related targets here. Those are stored as part of the integration in another part of the product. Next, we have variables, which allow you to store various types of data. Variables can exist globally or within a specific workflow. This page shows you your global variables, which are persistent between workflow runs and can be shared by multiple different workflows. It's worth pointing out that variables defined within workflows typically live and die with each workflow run and cannot be used or referred to by other workflows. That's where global variables come in. Variables come in multiple different types, including strings, booleans, date times, decimal numbers, integers, and secure strings. Secure strings are useful because they're encrypted and not visible once saved, so you can use them to store sensitive information like API keys. Triggers are where we configure what type of events cause our workflows to run. The first tab on this page is for automation rules. These rules come in multiple different types and can trigger a workflow to run based on various things, such as an approval task being acted on, an email arriving in a monitored mailbox, an incident being generated in XDR, a schedule, or a webhook. On the webhooks tab under the trigger section, you can create a webhook that an external product or system can trigger to run a workflow. After creating the webhook, you'll be given a URL to configure the other product to send requests to. Then you can link the webhook to one or more workflows using an automation rule. 
On the Calendars tab, you can configure different types of calendars. These calendars represent collections of days and are combined with schedules to determine when scheduled workflows run. For example, a calendar may be created to represent work days, and then that would be added to a schedule which determines when, within a given workday, the workflow runs, whether that's hourly, once per day, every three hours, and so on. If you're wondering why I didn't cover the Events or Schedules tabs, it's because they're deprecated. Automation rules have replaced events, and schedules are now configured as part of the automation rules themselves. Next, we have Tasks. Tasks can be generated by workflows or via the XDR API to request approval for something. For example, we have a workflow that removes inactive endpoints from Cisco Secure Endpoint. Before actually removing anything, the workflow creates an approval task which must be acted upon by the task's assignee. Once the task is approved or denied, the workflow will continue accordingly. So having covered the basics, let's take a look at the workflows themselves. On the Workflows page, you'll see a list of your organization's workflows and tabs for Atomics, recently used workflows, and your favorite workflows. Workflows are typically larger end-to-end -end use cases that consist of multiple steps. Atomics are small reusable building blocks that can be used and reused by multiple different workflows. Think of workflows like a script and Atomics as functions within the script. Workflows can come from various sources. Some are built into Cisco XDR, some are published in GitHub, some are in the XDR Automation Exchange, and you can of course create your own. The exchange can be found by clicking Exchange under the Automate menu. Importing a workflow can be done by clicking Import Workflow. Here you can import a workflow from Git or from JSON from a file or just by copy pasting the JSON itself. Creating your own workflow is possible by clicking Create Workflow and then selecting the type of workflow that you want to create. Let's click on an existing workflow to check out the Workflow Editor. The Workflow Editor has three primary areas, the Toolbox on the left, the Canvas in the middle, and the Properties Editor on the right. The Toolbox has multiple tabs of components that you can use when building a workflow. Activities are mostly atomics, but can also contain other types of functions that are built into the product. The Logic tab has more advanced components like loops and conditionals. And the Workflows tab allows you to nest another workflow within the one you're editing. The Canvas is the drag and drop area where you can build your workflow. You can drag things from the toolbox onto the Canvas and drop them where you see a green anchor. Clicking on something on the Canvas will open its properties in the Property Editor. Clicking on a blank part of the Canvas will open the Workflows properties. This is where you can configure workflow-specific variables, the workflow's targets, account keys, and so on. Once your workflow is written and has been executed, you can see what it did on the Runs page. The Runs page shows workflow performance over time and allows you to inspect previous workflow instances. When looking at a previous instance, you'll see a view similar to the workflow editor that shows you exactly what the workflow did and which part succeeded or failed. You can click on things to inspect them and get more information about what the workflow did. Automation is a powerful part of Cisco XDR that allows your organization to accelerate how you investigate, respond, integrate products with each other, and more. Whether you use the workflows built into XDR, write your own, import workflows from the automation exchange, or a combination thereof, you can realize significant time savings and efficiency for your organization. To learn more about Cisco XDR, please visit cisco.com slash go slash XDR. If you're more developer-minded, check out the Cisco DevNet resources for XDR at developer.cisco.com slash XDR. We hope you enjoyed this overview of XDR automation, and until next time, take care.